Well, this year, Survivor Series is known as War Games. Survivor Series War Games after, you know, NXT took the concept of the WCW match, you know, the famous WCW match in War Games, took that, made it its own thing for a couple years now, and now the WWE is getting in on it, you know, by putting it on the main roster. Putting the two steel cage rings in the fray. And while there are, again, traditional elements to this whole thing, there's also the fact that, you know, this is very much new. This is very much new for a lot of people. A lot of people, you know, you know, maybe have not, you know, seen a, a War Games match. I know. I know I've only seen like maybe one myself, like like actually sat down and watched it, like not not highlights or anything like that. Like we're talking, sit down, watch the war game match, see how it works. You know, it's gonna be interesting to see how this all goes. Right now, there are five matchups confirmed for this card. Not everything is completely finalized. Uh, Smackdown tomorrow will give us, you know, more of an insight of what is going to be um, something that we'll get into in a moment. But first things first, we gotta talk the Bloodline. That's right, the undisputed Universal Champion, the the big dog, the Tribal Chief. Roman, I almost said Chief. No, I, meant, yeah, I meant to say Chief. Roman Reigns and his crew, you know, um, Solis Koa, uh, who joined up, you know, a few months back. The Usos, of course, Jimmy J, Sami Zayn, who's also been a part of the Bloodline for a, a while now, and of course Roman himself. It's going to be interesting to see, you know, this group, because again, Right now, where I have been, you know, I've been predicting for the longest time that Roman is going to lose the title at a WrestleMania. I thought it would be, you know, this past WrestleMania, but no, that it ended up not being the case. But I have changed my prediction since then, and it it should be this upcoming WrestleMania that he will lose this title. It should be this upcoming WrestleMania that he will lose this title. Now there's been some matches, you know, that he's had, you know, again, since SummerSlam, you know, Brock Lesnar, of course, Drew McIntyre, Logan Paul, uh, to name a few, and all those matches have been solid. Still got the wonky, you know, finishes, you know, where it doesn't seem like, you know, Roman can completely do it by himself. But again, that's the, that's just been the charm of you know the tribal chief and everything like that, who's just been the absolute best, you know, over the past couple of years now. And this is an interesting lineup that he's going up against. You know, the brawling brutes, who again, um, if you don't know, Sheamus, Ridge, Holland, and Butch. Of course, two of those guys being you know completely renamed. Drew McIntyre, of course, you know, who's been touted as a contender to Roman's title, and Kevin Owens, who has been hurt for a little bit, hasn't really been doing too much. I know there was the whole Elias thing, you know, during the fall, but honestly, that you know didn't really go anywhere. This one is going to be interesting, you know. Again. I think the Bloodline has lost a little bit of momentum, but they still have the titles and everything like that. They have the undisputed tag titles and with the Usos. And again, Roman is still the big dog at the top right now. So, again, this one's going to be interesting because all... Because, I mean, you have legit contenders for Roman's title right here. Like, Owens is legit. There were a couple matches, you know, last year that he had with Kevin Owens that were just absolutely great. Again, McIntyre, of course, he, you know, sad, you know, for people out in the UK because, you know, that matchup it did not go the way they wanted, you know, for McIntyre. Or rather, it didn't go McIntyre's way out there, but, you know, you get what, you get what I mean. 
and then you know Sheamus, which you know very you know very surprising because I mean again, Sheamus hasn't had you know you know the the you know like the greatest run lately, but now he's resurging because it felt like he was stagnating for quite some time, and now you know things are finally picking up for him again, and I'm liking where it's going. I'm liking where this is going. I'm I'm thinking. We're going to get something at the Royal Rumble, but that won't be for another two months after this pay-per-view. Or at this premium live event, excuse me. And then the other War Games match again. Um, right now, it's Bianca Belair, who just lost the Raw Women's title. Asuka, Alessa Bliss, Mia Yim, who just returned, or rather Minjin, who just returned. Because they changed her name. And then the group of damage control. Bailey, the new Raw Women's Champ. EO Sky, Dakota Kai. Both of those women have returned. Rhea Ripley, who is on the Judgment Day. And has been causing a lot of havoc. And Nikki Cross. Now right now, you know, and, and my thoughts on this match right here. Again, we don't know who that last member is going to be. I could tell you. I really couldn't tell you because, again, I thought I thought things would go a little bit differently, you know, with this group, with this group of six, you know, in being damage control, and then you, you know the um, the Alexa Bliss, um, Bailey, and and Oscar team. I thought you know things would go differently there, but honestly. The feud with them has been interesting right now. The the wild card here, it's not Ray Ripley, you know, not not her. It's Nikki Cross that's the wild card here because she has gone undergone, you know, a transformation. She was a superhero, you know, almost a superhero. You know, and then she changed from that and now she's you know, been on a rampage going back to one of her old personas. So you know, it's going to be intriguing to see because, again, I was shocked, you know, at, at Crown Jewel when she came up and did and did some stuff, you know. I'm sitting here like, wait a minute, what's going on here? But, honestly, whoever the last member of Bianca Bella's team is, I really could tell you. Whoever, whoever it will be, I'm sure we'll know. And, you know, right now... I, I think this I think this feud between the main six that we're talking about here could go on for a little bit longer. You know, they it's kind of stagnated because damage control kind of you know had some bumpy moments along the way, but now they have the titles and everything like that. So you know, it's interesting to see where things can go from there. Um, SmackDown Women's Championship literally filler. You could you could literally call this filler. Cause I mean, again, I'm not, I'm, I'm not sold. I'm sorry, I'm just not sold on Ronda Rousey being any sort of champion. I get it. Liv Morgan wasn't that great of a champ in hindsight, because she really didn't do too much with the title, and you know, it, it's kind of, it's got, it's kind of something. Cause I know there's other, again, I know there's more talented women on this roster. That can give it a go, but I just don't. I just, I just don't see, you know, anybody doing really anything to stop Ronda Rousey at this moment. Now there could be somebody, you know, some returning faces, you know, that we haven't seen in a while come back and do some damage. But right now, I, I, I really just kind of tuned out, and you know, Shotzi Blackheart. I mean, okay. I mean they. It hasn't really looked like that she's been a number one contender at all. And it's like, okay, this match is on the pay-per-view because... Don't know why. I really don't. Um, meanwhile, the U.S. title has gotten a lot of importance over the past few months, which I'm really liking, you know, Seth Rollins is the champ now. Bobby Lashley finally had like an actual proper match with Brock Lesnar and that didn't go too well because uh, like 
the match ended in a dumb way at Crown Jewel. And then there's Austin Theory. This is a triple threat. So an Austin Theory had the Money in the Bank briefcase. Could have cashed it in at any point. You know, or at least made an attempt to cash it in at any point. Used it on the U.S. title for some reason. And now he's finally looking like the Austin Theory that we should be seeing. You know, a gritty competitor that can go. And I'm really liking it. I'm really liking it. You know, a lot of people are really liking this new version of Austin Theory who's not, you know, Vince's golden boy. You know, new, or rather Vince's new golden boy, I should say. And, you know, Bobby Lashley just, you know, again, lost the U.S. title, you know, due to Brock Lesnar. Had a match against Brock Lesnar in which Brock pretty much got destroyed in this matchup, but yet he still won by the grace of God. And it's Seth Rollins, who's been Seth Rollins, you know, just a phenomenal f performer that, again, kind of gets lost in the wayside, you know, when talking about the WWE at times, because, you know, like he's great and all, but, yeah, you know, it's like some people just don't seem to talk about him. I may be completely wrong on that, but, again, when you hear Seth Rollins, do you really, do you really get super excited? Because I know I do. But some people don't. And then AJ Styles is going to be taking on Finn Balor in what may be the last match on the card. Um, again, Judgment Day has been terrorizing, you know, the whole Dominic Betrayed Ray thing has been happening. And that whole thing with Ray Ripley, and um, which is absolutely hilarious stuff. And then the rest of the Judgment Day just being, you know, you know, not... You know, they like, have been booked okay, and it's not like it's not like you know things have gone the greatest for this group since it formed. You know, they they seemingly got rid of Edge in in the time between SummerSlam and now, but he'll probably be back at some point. And now they're feuding with AJ Styles and the OC. You know. You know, and that's Anderson and Gallows, you know, who have come back over from New Japan. And there's a whole situation involving, you know, um, the OC coming back over from New Japan involving the Never Never Openweight Championship. But that, I think that's been quashed. I'm not sure. I haven't looked that up in a hot minute. But, I mean, who really cares? It's the Never Openweight Championship. It's a title. You know, and New, New Japan has their own set of problems that have not, you know, been discussed by me over the past couple of years, um, but it is what it is. There, right now, right now, Triple H is you know, from where from when I last made a video on WWE back during back in late July, things now in the WWE have looked a little bit better, a little bit. It's not perfect or anything again. Nothing's going to be perfect in wrestling, but right now I think things are nice. You know, again, the whole AEW situation got overblown, you know, and I think they're doing just fine. I'm just not going to watch AEW. I'm just, I'm just not, you know, I, I do not have that commitment to watch all this wrestling. And, you know, I prefer WWE. That's just me. But, you know, AEW is very respectable, you know. Other companies are doing their own thing and, you know, doing it nicely as well. You know, again, ROH is paired up with AEW. Impact's still doing their thing. You know, AAA doing their thing as well. Um, Stardom also doing their thing you know, as well. Finally got a women's championship over in New Japan. Took them long enough. That, that was a thing that happened um, last weekend, you know. They finally crowned the champion over there. But the state of wrestling right now is in a good spot, I think. We're in a good spot where a lot can go, you know, either way, you know. I don't think AEW is in a war with WWE or anything. I think these two companies are really head and shoulders above everybody else right now. And we got we got the best of the best of the best wrestling in these two companies right now and it's just it's just fun 
it's just fun to watch. Um, again, there's only five matches confirmed for War Games, and I think the sixth may be Bray Wyatt versus LA Knight. And I, I don't know if that's going to happen or not at this pay per view, but you know, it's it's really it's really intriguing to see you know what Bray Wyatt can really do and what LA Knight can do. So again, both these guys, you know. You know, Bray Wyatt's just coming back. L.A. Knight had the whole maximum male models thing that was absolutely terrible. Like, my goodness, that was, that was awful. But he looks like, you know, that guy that could do some damage again. And Bray Wyatt wanted to prove that he is that guy again. You know, that guy that's been a, that was a monster in the WWE for so long. So... That's the only other match that I can think of that could be added to this card. And what do y'all think? You know, it's going to be a great Thanksgiving weekend. It's already been a great Thanksgiving so far. I know, I know I'm happy with the results of today. Uh, but in any case, we still got Black Friday. We still got Saturday. Still got NFL Sunday, which again, it's going to be weird. But you know, it is what it is with NFL Sunday. And, you know, can't wait to talk to you all about the WWE come Royal Rumble time because it's going to be interesting to see how things go from there. You know, from here at, at Survivor Series, and we have like a two month gap in between, you know, premium live events. So, can't wait to talk to y'all tomorrow. Black Friday is going to be. To talk about the FCS, we got to talk about the FCS playoffs. It's time, everyone. It is time to talk the FCS playoffs. So I'll be here tomorrow to talk the FCS playoffs, um, and I'll see you all then. Take care and have a good rest of your Thanksgiving.